Aloha everybody, welcome back to my channel, Kai Waza with you, and uh, today I'm going to, I decided to embark on a, a new series, but it will be a very intermittent series, not on any regular basis. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, several months ago I started a new project. Uh, for quite some time I've had a radio station on live365.com called Hawaiian Hi-Fi, which is from my Hawaiian record music collection. Uh, something else I also love is easy listening music, and I decided a couple months ago to start another radio station on Live 365 uh, called Moody Mood Music, because easy listening was sometimes called mood music. Uh, and I just thought I would do um, some videos from time to time, whenever it comes up, uh, on the subject matter of the mood music, moody mood music, or the, uh, the genre or the records that I would be featuring on the radio station. So today we're going to uh, start that series off with a look at a, a very beautiful record set. Now you may not be familiar with these record sets. Um, they were done uh, primarily by Reader's Digest and Launching Symphonette Society out of New York, but also some of the major labels did them to a lesser degree also. Um, usually easy listening music and sometimes classical and semi-classical music. My grandfather had a lot of them, although not the particular one we're going to look at today. Uh, and in terms of, you know, being collectible, they are not, uh, for a number of reasons, um, having nothing to do with the quality. Um, just. I think a lot of it is to do that people don't like easy listening music anymore. <laughs> so they just want to throw it away. Like Because I'm finding so much easy listening music in dollar record bins, it's like insane. Just tons of it. I guess nobody really wants that music. It's the music that, you know, time forgot or whatever. Anyway, uh, so they aren't considered collectible at all. But I have a certain place in my heart for them. Because my grandfather had so many and I had some and it just, I don't know. Uh, you would get them in the mail, mail order, you would, you know, receive notification that something new was coming out, and if you had a subscription, you would get it, and you could return it if you didn't want to keep it, or uh, keep it, or you would order them through various places, uh, but it was all through the mail that you would get these sets. And we're going to look at one today, and the reason we're going to look at it is because I got it a while back, but it's in such nice condition uh, and it has all of the original paperwork with it, which is kind of unusual. So I thought we'd take a little step back to 1964 when this was released and look at this beautiful large box set called The Magical World of Melody. And we will be hearing selections from it um, during our discussion and viewing of it. So let's take a closer look. 1964 is the year of the release. So here we see Magical World of Melody brought to you by Reader's Digest featuring the best love melodies of 20 of the world's most popular composers we see listed here. And so uh, as we open it up we'll see that each album, each record, I should say, it's uh, two sides. One side usually devoted, one side devoted to uh, one composer, the second side compo uh, devoted to another composer. So we can see here the contents of the ten records that are included here in the set. Although I do have a little surprise about that coming. Um, now, as I said, the reason, the reason I was really attracted to this, not just the music, but it was in such good condition and had so much of the paperwork, and I ended up getting it. I think she only charged me. It was at the uh, Goodwill, and I believe she only charged me the price of two records, so I think it was less than $3 to get this whole set here. Um, and I, I love the paperwork and whatnot. This Reader's Digest album is recorded in Dynagroove. So you know it's good. And indeed, the, the quality on these recordings is very good. So it comes with this booklet enclosed, rather large booklet, that will tell you all about the music. Copyright 1964. And what's, uh, what's great about a lot of these box sets, if you don't know much about this music, is they always uh, generally have a lot of 
information about the music, in this case the, the songs and the composers. You can see here they are listing all of the sides of the albums with the composers, information about them, information about the songs, and there's pictures and some nice sort of clip art type illustrations with all kinds of information. So it's a great way also to learn a little bit more about the artists here. Now this particular set is a mix of popular and some classical, sort of semi-classical stuff uh, on it. Now something I definitely want to point out to you, I think it's quite interesting, um, you see they mention it up here, Pleasure Programmed. Uh, during this time period, RC, or, uh, Reader's Digest was doing this thing they called Pleasure Programmed. And it's very interesting to me. Here's a little information about it. But, uh, but the idea was if you wanted a particular mood, a particular setting, the records were recorded so that you could actually play particular sides to make a certain program. For example say you were going to be reading, you're saying, honey, let's read our books tonight and sit by the fireplace and let's play moments of quiet or meditation. So quiet melody so it won't really disturb our reading. So here's a program of that. In order to get that, it's two hours long. You would play sides 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And that would give you that program. Maybe you were wanting to hear some old world music in the evening. That program is an hour and 20 minutes. And you just played side 8, 10, 13, and 15. And also they had spaces for personal pleasure programming. Maybe your own ideas of what you liked to hear grouped together. So, really interesting, kind of funny. And I wonder, I'm really curious if anybody actually listened that way. I mean... How many, if any, people actually used pleasure programming and, and said, hey, let's just do the, the semi-classical program tonight or whatever? I'd be curious to know. Now, it comes with, if you happen to like it, some of the paperwork here, an invitation to share your enjoyment with friends so that you can... I guess this originally sold here, it says for seventeen ninety six, so you could... Uh, give this to friends and they could reserve this set for that same price because otherwise it would be necessary and they gave you these six to do it with although the, it, here there's actually two so maybe it was a mistake and they gave you 12 but apparently they didn't pass it on to anybody and since it was ended up at the Goodwill maybe they weren't very fond of it anyway uh, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Following that, I don't think this came with it originally, but it was in the folder, which is play the new game at Safeway, stamp it rich, win 1,000 extra gold bond stamps for the occupant of 1500 South Birch Street in Denver, Colorado. I guess you got your stamps from Safeway and collected them for whatever. However, you have to tear off and redeem the coupons before July 31st of 1965. Here's a little sheet that just gives sort of an introduction to the set. Um, some nice clip art on the inside of this one, I think. Or not clip art, whatever, just, you know, paintings of the music and the time. They talk about being pleasure programmed again and Dynagroove's a thrilling sound. And I love this. There's some uh, reviews from some people who had it, and uh, I am not... I don't remember this ever happening. I think I am old enough that it happened, but my family just seemed to have gone to either, you know, sort of diners, or we didn't eat out a lot. We went either to diners, I think, or drive-ins, or, you know, tasty freezes, or things like that. But one of these reviews says, a few months ago, my daughter and I were out to dinner at a restaurant when the stereo began to play music that had a certain familiar sound. I asked the waitress if it was a Reader's Digest album, and she said yes, and that the music was in constant demand. Can you imagine going to the restaurant being like, can you play Reader's Digest music, please? Oh, and while you're at it, could you pleasure program it for a night of quiet meditation? 
Uh, and then uh, last, I love this, which is um, letting you see the other albums that were available to you that you could try out in your home. And if you didn't like them, you could mail them back at their expense um, or, you know, pay the installment to, to keep them. But so many different uh, kinds of, again, you know, most of, I have this Christmas one here, it's quite nice. Uh, most of the sets are uh, easy listening, classical music, and semi-classical music. Yeah. And here we see again the, uh, the albums coming each in a beautiful sleeve. Plastic, uh, plastic, or a nice, uh, whatever you call it, paper sleeve. Quality of the, the recordings is always very good on these records. Good quality recordings, nice sound. And this particular set was looked like it hadn't been played, really. I think maybe, you know, they just didn't care for it or whatever. But what's interesting that I, I don't know the story behind, they list 10 records here. And they talk about 10 records and show 10 records on the content. But yet there is an 11th record, which was the captivating love music of Puccini and the haunting blues of Harold Arlen. So, sort of a bonus record that nobody even talked about in here. So I got 11 easy listening albums for the price of two, basically. And now, uh, they say in several places, you know, this set features outstanding, outstanding orchestras, but they don't say who they are anywhere. So, except they are listed on the record. So I will share with you um, I think it's 11. There are actually 11 groups. Now, one artist would do one side, another artist would do one side, the other, or perhaps one artist would do the entire out record, but um, it wasn't like a compilation, like one of each or something. It was uh, one orchestra doing one side and another doing the other or doing the entire album. And those units or those groups were, that are on this collection, Wally Stott and Orchestra, Ken Thorne and Orchestra, Robert Bentley and his orchestra with the Roger Curtis singers, bon uh, Ronnie Hazelnut, Hazelhurst, Hazelnut, Ronnie Hazelhurst and orchestra, uh, Gilbert Vin Vinter and orchestra, Hill Bowen and his orchestra with the John McCarthy singers, Peter Knight singers and orchestra with John Wingle as pianist, uh, Frank Cordell and his orchestra, Henri or Henry Rene and his orchestra, and then the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra under four different conductors in this set. Uh, those conductors being Gilbert Vintner, Charles Gerhardt, Peter Knight, and Anatole Fistolari. Anyway, those are the musicians that are featured uh, on this set. Okay, well that's it friends. I hope you enjoyed that uh, look into the, the magical world of melody from Reader's Digest. And uh, again, you can hear selections from this uh, beautiful box set uh, on my radio station online at live365.com called Moody Mood Music. And I will link that below. Uh, available in uh, the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Right now. That's it. Hopefully worldwide eventually, but just for now, broadcasting in those three countries. Okay, take care, and we will see you in the next video.